Holy smokes! I'm sorry, Apple, you just got killed! Is OnePlus finally back making proper flagship killers? Well, in this video, I have my iPhone 15 Pro Max and the brand new OnePlus 12, and I'm gonna compare both of them in terms of everything from the design, the display quality, the brightness, the performance, speakers, and much more. Now on paper, the OnePlus 12 is incredibly impressive. It truly does look like a flagship killer phone, especially with that insane 4,500 nits of display brightness. We'll put that to the test, see if it's actually real, but let's get this out of the box. Right here we can see, oh, this is their new really cool green design. Let's take the sticker off. That feels really nice, got this really cool texture, and dang, look at that camera bump. This is absolutely crazy. If we compare it to the iPhone, this thing looks absolutely nuts, especially with this massive circular camera ring around it. You got Hasselblad right there, you have the specs all around, and it looks like it has a fourth camera, but it looks like there's actually just some sensors and the flash built in, so this should be a pretty similar camera layout. Now in terms of the actual dimensions, it looks like the OnePlus is slightly narrower, but taller, so the aspect ratio is a little bit longer because it has that 6.82 inch display, so it's kind of jumping the gun compared to the iPhone 16 Pro that's gonna be coming next year with a taller display. And in terms of the design, we know that the iPhone has these flat sides that are now a little bit curved, so it feels nicer in your hand, but I've gotta say this OnePlus does feel more comfy because it does have this curved design all the way around, just all the way like this, nice and comfortable, instead of like the new S24 Ultra, which is picking up the iPhone's design of flat sides. Of course, we have the leaks of the Pixel 9 Pro also becoming flat, but this is staying true to the nice and comfy feel. Now on the right side, we have the volume buttons, the power button as usual, like we have on a lot of Androids. But on the other side, we see just this one little switch, which is really nice that you have this mute toggle physical switch that we don't see anymore on the iPhones or many other phones, so this is a really nice touch. While of course we have the new action button on the iPhone, which I love. On the bottom we can see we still have a SIM card tray on the OnePlus, which is really nice. Apple got rid of it a couple of years ago. It sucks we don't have it, but I guess they're moving forward. We have USB-C on both of them. And in terms of charging speed, the nice thing about the OnePlus is that you get an 80 watt wired charger in the box, which is just nuts. Then they also have their 50 watt wireless charger which is absolutely insane because Apple limits it to 15. Now you might think that probably decimates the battery health, but in reality, Jerry Rig Everything showed us that on the inside of this OnePlus 12, they have two different batteries stacked in tandem, so it actually keeps more cool and it doesn't kill the battery health like you thought it would. So let's go ahead and power this thing on and get it set up. Now moving over to the front sides, I can see that the bezels on the OnePlus actually do look thinner then on the iPhone, probably because it has a curved glass display, so the sides look super, super thin. Of course, you have a hole punch instead of the massive dynamic island on the iPhone, so basically it does look more immersive. And I also see that it has a razor thin speaker grill at the top that you could barely even see compared to the one on the iPhone that is thin, but definitely more noticeable. So with that said, the first thing I wanna test is the speakers because OnePlus has been behind in terms of speaker quality. All right, wow, that was really impressive for the OnePlus because it was actually a little bit louder than the iPhone and it still sounded actually really good. The iPhone wasn't as loud, but I do tell that the, the vocals and the separation of the frequency is a little bit better, a little bit more sharp and clear, but I do gotta give props for OnePlus because this is a huge improvement. Now moving over to the display quality, the OnePlus 12 has a 1440p display, which is really impressive, has 510 PPI compared to 460 on the iPhone, so the screen is actually more sharp 
and better resolution. And then on top of that, you could do that high res and 120 hertz at the same time, which is really nice. While the iPhone, of course, has the same 120 hertz ProMotion technology that works great. And now let's get over to display brightness where we have our first on paper moment because the iPhone has a typical manual brightness of 1000 nits compared to 1600 on the OnePlus 12, but it looking like this, the iPhone's brighter. Clearly, the iPhone is brighter. They're both set to the maximum. I even went into the settings, turned off auto brightness, set it to the full, turned on high performance mode. I turned off everything else that could possibly limit the brightness. And would you look at that? it's still dimmer than the iPhone. It's currently very overcast outside, so we just put both phones in front of our studio light, and still, it's not bright enough to make the max out, but it's still around the same on both. Now, in terms of HDR video brightness, OnePlus claimed that it went up to 4,500 nits peak, but I'm watching this right now, and to me, the iPhone is looking brighter, which iPhone claims it's 1600 nits peak for HDR. So I don't know what's going on with the specs for the OnePlus, but we're trying everything. We even tried to turn off auto brightness, manually set it to the max, and still it's neck and neck with the iPhone in terms of brightness. And in some scenes, the iPhone is actually a little bit brighter. And a really weird thing that I noticed is that when you're holding the phone in portrait mode like this, with the actual video being a small section, it actually is brighter compared to when you go full screen. You could actually see it dim down a little bit, almost like it can't handle the brightness for the entire display. And now let's get into performance, starting with the SSD storage disk speed test. Now I do wanna mention that both of these have 512 gigs of storage, and that's a really big deal because right now OnePlus is giving you the 512 upgrade and 16 gig RAM upgrade for basically no extra cost, $800, which is a killer deal because this iPhone, the 15 Pro Max with 512, only has eight gigs of RAM, and it cost me $1,400, almost twice the price. So if this thing turns out to be really good, it truly is a flagship killer. Now running the speed test, whoa, look at that. That was really fast on the OnePlus. 2,600 megabytes per second read compared to 1,400 on the iPhone and 1,300 write compared to 1,400 write on the iPhone. So slightly slower write, but very, very fast read speed. And now let's get into CPU performance with Geekbench 6. We have the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on the OnePlus 12, which is actually a killer value for only $800. This is actually the first one we're getting with that chip compared to the A17 Pro chip on the iPhone. Let's run the CPU test. And we got our results and wow, not bad Qualcomm. Looking at single core, the iPhone still has a lead about 32% faster, but in multi-core, it's only about 9% faster. So the Android side is starting to really quickly catch up to what Apple's able to do. This is really impressive. Now let's move over to the graphics side and we know that Qualcomm's 8 Gen 2 was actually faster than Apple's for a while. And I think it might even be faster than the new A17 Pro. So this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna run Wildlife Extreme Unlimited and then a brand new test, which I'll show you in a minute. Holy smokes, I'm sorry Apple, you just got killed. The OnePlus 12 with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, 44.4% faster or higher FPS in Wildlife Extreme Unlimited. That is extremely impressive. I don't think this has ever happened to Apple in, I don't know, over a decade. Them getting destroyed in graphics performance that badly. Apple, you gotta do something because this is getting embarrassing. Right here we have the brand new Solar Bay test from 3D Mark. That's a ray tracing test, which the A17 Pro has ray tracing and the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 does as well. So this is gonna be very interesting for ray tracing gameplay. All right, let's run this test. And I have a feeling that this might just end up being the best budget flagship 
of 2024. And wow, there's an even bigger difference. Looking at the overall score, the OnePlus is 55% faster or higher in terms of the average frame rate. That's extremely impressive. And this thing has insanely good cooling, so we could probably keep it going for a longer amount of time, which I'm about to do the stress test in just a second. But take a look at this. Looking at section three, the FPS on the OnePlus is 28 average compared to a huge dip, 15 FPS dip, on the iPhone, so it's almost like it throttled down and had to cut down the power much more than we had to do on the OnePlus. So this is just really impressive. So let's go ahead and do the stress test to see how they handle the power and heat over a long time. I'm even gonna be checking the thermals with our Seek thermal cam. So let's get this started. The stress test has been going on for a while and I've already noticed that the iPhone's display has dimmed down. It is no longer as high as it was matching the OnePlus. So that signifies some overheating. So let's take a look at this and Wow, 44 degrees Celsius, the hot spot on the iPhone, and it's all really close to that spot where the chip is at. Whereas here, you can see just how much the heat spreaders are spreading out the heat across the phone, and the hot spot is 42 degrees Celsius, so it's definitely staying more cool and it's able to have the display brightness higher, so it's killing it in terms of the consistency. All right, the 20 minute stress test is finished and we can see that the iPhone is still dimmed down because of heat. You could actually see right here, I'm trying to raise it brighter, but it's not. It's not reacting because it's still overheated. But anyway, getting to the results, we can see that the highest best loop score is 8,500 on the OnePlus, 6,200 on the iPhone. However, the stability is better on the iPhone. So that's basically how much it thermal throttles because the OnePlus went from 8,500 down to 4,700 as the lowest loop compared to 6,200 down to basically 4,000. So this does hold the performance a little bit better, but overall the OnePlus is still the winner here. And now let's get into the cameras. First of all, I wanna go through the quick specs. The iPhone has a 12 megapixel selfie cam compared to 32 on the OnePlus 12. And then on the back, the iPhone has a wide cam with 48 megapixels compared to 50 on the OnePlus. The periscope is actually 64 megapixels compared to only 12 with the Tetra Prism on the iPhone. And then the ultra wide is also 48 megapixels on the OnePlus compared to still 12 on the iPhone. And now getting into the actual photo comparison itself, I have a selfie shot on both of the phones and at first glance, they both look really good. So let's zoom in and see the detail. And even though it's 32 megapixel compared to 12, they both do look really similar, although I do see a little bit more sharpness on the OnePlus. But honestly, I'm kind of liking the skin tones and the highlight roll off better on the iPhone. Just more of that warmth coming through. Now moving on to a portrait shot with the wide camera. This is actually at 2X on both of the phones and you can instantly see a difference even at this distance. Look at that orange kind of sunset glow of our light bulb right behind Max right there. The colors are really popping through compared to the OnePlus where everything is just really flat and the colors aren't really showing up. And then let's zoom in on Max here and look at that difference. The iPhone is killing it in terms of the quality. You can see his facial hair is more sharp. You can see texture in his skin, whereas this is just kind of all soft and blurry. That's a win for the iPhone again. Now here's where it gets interesting because this is the ultra wide, which has 48 megapixels on the OnePlus, and I did shoot it in the high resolution mode. So let's go ahead, zoom in on max. And there you go. Now the OnePlus is winning in terms of detail. Just look at that. Look how soft and grainy it is on the iPhone with that 12 megapixel. Quite a bit more detail on the OnePlus. But in terms of HDR, I am seeing a little bit more shadow detail on the iPhone down here with the couch 
and his pants and shoes, whereas this is quite a bit darker and more crushed. And then let's move on to the main camera sensor comparison. We have 48 megapixels on the iPhone, 50 on the OnePlus, and let's zoom into this 1X photo and look at the sensor detail. And to be completely honest, the iPhone is doing better because I can more clearly read all of the names and text on this sign compared to the OnePlus, which is a lot more kind of blurry and just more artifacts kind of, especially this sign in the back. Can't even read it at all where it's looking better on the iPhone. And then for this shot, I wanted to do a 1X main camera, but in portrait mode because Apple does have the 24 megapixel portraits. So let's take a look at how much more detail you get. And wow, once again, so much more detail on the iPhone. You can see all the texture, all the creases in Max's jacket and his face, his hair zooming in a little bit more, a lot more detail on the iPhone. You could actually see the texture on his face compared to all this just being really flat with no shadow detail. And now we have the Periscope camera. The iPhone has a new 5X compared to 3X optical on the OnePlus, which I did shoot in high res mode, which is 64 megapixels. And apparently you can't zoom in, which I tried to do to match the kind of zoom length on the iPhone. So we're gonna have to crop in in post like this on the OnePlus. And wow, even with the extra megapixels, the iPhone's 5X still looks better with that optical. You can see the details here, there. Yep, the iPhone is winning here as well. And now we have the final shot, which I've zoomed in to the max on the iPhone, which is 25X on that 5X lens. And I did 25 as well on the OnePlus, which you can see it does look better. And that's because it has an in-sensor 6X crop, which allows it to apply all the algorithms and then it zooms up to 25. So yes, that does win in this case. So it seems like the only thing that's holding the iPhone back is the limitation of 12 megapixels for the telephoto and ultra wide, which is where the OnePlus won. So with that said, we're actually also gonna do an unbiased blind camera test with the OnePlus 12 against the regular iPhone 15 because the price points match up at 800 bucks. So definitely subscribe for that. But let's finish off this video and answer the original question. Is the OnePlus 12 a flagship killer that destroys the iPhone 15 Pro Max at a much lower price? Well, Almost, because a lot of the things are really good, like the performance especially, but a lot of the specs on paper are just not showing up in real life, like the display brightness. It's just nowhere near what they advertise. And the camera, even though the specs are great, it's not as good as the iPhone in most cases. So I would say no, it does not defeat the 15 Pro Max, but, for an $800 price, especially for 512 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM, this is probably the best Android phone that you can buy and maybe even the best budget phone and maybe even the best budget flagship of 2024. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and subscribe above for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.